Exodus 25, verses 10 to 22, begins with the ark, the focal point of the furniture in the tabernacle to be built for the Lord. Let's read its description. Quote, two and a half cubits shall be its length, a cubit and a half its width, and a cubit and a half its height. And you shall overlay it with pure gold, inside and out you shall overlay it, and shall make on it a molding of gold all around. Verses 10 and 11. A cubit could vary in length, but is usually taken to mean about 18 inches. So the box measured 45 inches long by 27 inches wide and high. It was a container to hold some special objects, the first being the testimony, verse 21, the tablets the Lord would give Moses. Thus it became known as the Ark of the Testimony, verse 22, made of virtually indestructible acacia wood. It was covered both inside and out with gold. On it was a solid gold lid called the mercy seat. Mercy seat, kaporet in Hebrew, is linked with kafar, the word for cover, and kippur, atonement. It was his throne on earth and says God, quote, there I will meet with you and I will speak with you. Verse 22. Of the same length and width as the ark, the solid gold lid also included this, quote, two cherubim of gold, of hammered work, you shall make the cherubim at the two ends of it of one piece with the mercy seat. And the cherubim shall stretch out their wings above, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and they shall face one another. Verses 18 to 20. Wouldn't this be a reminder of the real cherubim that serve in God's presence? In fact, God became known as, quote, the one who dwells between the cherubim. 2 Kings 19, 15, and Psalm 81, etc. No wonder this room was called the most holy place, the holiness of holinesses. How essential it is to, quote, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Psalm 29, 2. Ark in Hebrew is Arun and can be translated chest. The ark was, in fact, God's hope chest. All his hopes for a heavenly home filled with a loving forever family were invested in one person, his son. Before the world ever needed a savior, Christ covenanted with his father to sacrifice himself, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, Revelation 13, verse eight. And by this could bring many sons to glory, Hebrews 2.10. When we read, quote, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, 2 Corinthians 5.19, we see how in Christ God could say, there I will meet with you and I will speak with you, Exodus 25.22. The word used for mercy seat in the Septuagint, the Greek Old Testament, is hilasterion, the same word used for propitiation in Romans 3, verses 24 and 25. Quote, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith. Propitiation means that Christ's wrath-absorbing sacrifice was fully satisfactory to God. He is the mercy seat where God can meet with us because of Christ's shed blood. When we are satisfied with him through faith, we are saved. The chest was made of pure gold that is discovered like his deity and indestructible wood that grows like his humanity. It isn't hard to see the layers in these verses, quote, God has in these last days spoken to us by his son, the incarnate one, like the acacia wood, who being the outshining of his glory, 
that's the gold on the outside, and the express image of his person, that's the gold on the inside, when he had by himself purged our sins, the mercy seat where the blood was applied, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, Hebrews 1, 1 to 3. The mercy seat is God's throne, and yes, Christ is God's hope chest. <laughs> 